On our previous videos, we looked at various types of reactions that will come together in this particular video, which is called catalytic cyclic of an oxy process. Now, those videos so far, we talked about oxidative addition, then moving into migratory insertion, we looked at hydrometallation, also another type which is called carbometallation or transmetallation. That also leads to another video where we talked about carboxylation and next is better hydride elimination and the carbo palladiation or hydropalladiation and finally which leads to the start of a new circle which is called reductive elimination which is quite the opposite of oxidative addition now in this particular video we will look at oxo processes that actually result in a type of oxidation of an unsaturated i would say hydrocarbon in one case we can look at our kin or the type of our kinds and what we're going to do is to be able to transform this into a high level aldehyde which is actually a mix of aldehydes either let's say one position in one particular region where we have a carbon and a hydrogen or we have two regions there and we have it right there in the middle so we can have a mix of those so that being said, we're going to see how we can perform this in the presence of a particular compound which is called carbon monoxide where we actually result in a type of reaction called, I would say, carbonylation. So, let's look at the focus reaction in this particular catalytic circle where we're going to focus on ox process which we're going to show the mechanism for this particular reaction which is in this box right here sometimes you might be given a reaction like this on the test or in any particular articles and you'll be asked to produce a catalytic cycle that shows the mechanism that goes from a specific alkane which we're going to identify here where by numbering we have one two three four in the presence of carbon monoxide which is what we have right here and this carbon monoxide will be somehow added to this particular alkane in the presence of these metals right here either RH or we have CO which is cobalt now if you look at these metals on the periodic table you notice they are in the same groups which is quite fascinating and we also have hydrogen gas present in this particular reaction and this actually leads to the formation of two products that are side from each other we notice here that by numbering we have carbon one two three four and here we're going to still maintain the number of carbons carbon one two three four relative to this particular reactant right there and what we notice is that due to the purpose here we see that this alkane here will undergo some kind of here due to the presence of hydrogen we might say that the hydrogen will be subjected to reductive elimination or and hydrometallation and it's quite fascinating that that is going to happen to this particular reactant right here and this reactant will also be subjected to a type of reaction called carbonylation which i'll just represent as c and what you see here is that we are going to introduce a carbonyl group in this particular compound that results in the formation of one product where this particular carbonyl is attached to carbon one and the other side reactant is the carbonyl attached to carbon two where both carbon one and carbon two right in this particular step right here are the reactive site that will be attached to the metals either these metals rh or co so therefore it means that these guys here they are the catalysts in this particular reaction so for purpose sake we're just going to limit our metal to rh and what we see here in rh is that rh is already bonded to 
a specific hydrogen where we'll call the hydrogen to be hydrogen 1. So if you notice here, we have hydrogen 1 and hydrogen 2. And in our products, we notice that here we have an extra hydrogen right here, which we'll put as H1. And then we'll have another hydrogen here attached here, which is H2. The same thing is applicable here where we have hydrogen 1 positioned right here and here, hydrogen 2. So by investigating this particular reaction here, we can be able to actually lead ourselves to the execution of this particular process. So first step is that, oh, we're going to add our reactant, which has the alkene right there. And what, no, what you notice is that we have two products right here. So the two products means that there are two side products that will be formed. One where we'll have a formation of a pi complex where on one side we actually have this actually formed and on the other side we actually have this actually flipped over. And what happens as a result of that is the particular reaction called the hydrometallation where we have this particular hydrogen moving over here to this carbon 2 and then this pi bond forms a sigma bond right there or the other case where we have this actually attached there and then we have our pi bond forming a sigma bond right there so as a result of this hydrometallation which is a type of a reaction called the migratory insertion we lead to the formation of this particular product right here. So in this case, our hydrogen one will be positioned right here, H1, and while on the other side, we have our hydrogen attached right there, hydrogen one. Now the next reaction will be called the carbon monoxide complexation. And this complexation is actually a result of carbon monoxide actually forming a complex with this particular alkyl metal that is formed right there. So what happens is due to the presence of carbon monoxide, what happens is that carbon monoxide actually is coordinated with this particular metal and this results in this particular product right here on the next step. So now that's out of the way, our next one is a second migratory insertion in this case is going to be called a carbonylation occurs when our bond here actually cleaves and migrates over to this carbon and then this particular pi bond forms a lone pair on the oxygen to make this oxygen to go from a formal charge of plus to neutral while on the other side product we actually have the same thing happening but in here what happens is that this particular bond migrates and inserts itself over there and then this actually actually results in the formation of this particular product and finally once this is actually produced we have our hydrogen gas which is hydrogen one and hydrogen two actually coming in here and performing a reductive cleavage which results in the reproduction of our metal hydride which is what we have right there so what happens in this mechanism is that this particular bond cleaves and hydrogen one comes in contact with this particular metal by forming a bond and this particular bond cleaves and picks up hydrogen 2 right there. This same thing is applicable to this other metal where this bond cleaves and then bonds with our metal and this bond breaks and picks up our hydrogen 2 right there. So as a result, we have the formation of two products where we have that right there and the other one is right there and this particular metal here which is a hydride will 
start again with a new circle and also make more of this particular product one and product two for just side discussion this first particular one here is actually a favorable product so all the same thanks for following me through this hope you're able to understand the first step here which is called the pi complex formation that is followed next by a type of migratory insertion called the hydrometallation and then this leads to the formation of a carbon monoxide complexation with a alkyl metal complex and then that particular complex performs another type of migratory insertion which is called carbonylation and then this results in our final step which is called reductive cleavage all the same stay smart and believe in yourselves mm -hmm.